everybody's testimony is being built more and more and more. Remember, there's always that test and money. Amen? Ooh, you know, because God's building. Listen, you get testimonies built in the valleys, not the mountaintops. Amen? Praise God. How's everybody tonight? Blessed, highly flavored, and on fire for Jesus. Amen? Would you grab your swords and go to Ephesians 6? Ephesians 6. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. This is not a Bible study. It's a training session for warriors. Even though we use the Bible as the great arm of God, of his word, so that we can have the weapons of God. In Ephesians 6, in verse 10, please. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Okay, praise God. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not our own. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the trickery. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. In other words, put on the full armor to fight against the unseen realm that is constantly attempting <laughs> to deceive you. Amen? It's a constant thing trying to deceive you. And also trying to dethrone Christ from your heart and everything. You know, one of the things that the enemy tries to do is penetrate your soul with deception. Now, again, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations. In all of these areas, the enemy is trying to penetrate so that your soul has not reached a place of conversion. And that conversion must be in a place where it's converting more and more into the image and likeness of Christ, where you have the mind of Christ, the will of Christ, the desires of Christ. And one of the things that the enemy does tremendously, you know, we are in a warfare, amen? There's spiritual warfare. And one of the most, I mean, heck, we got chemical warfare these days, the way all the, the plagues and diseases and proclamations that people are making. We have fear warfare. There's all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. There's all kinds of plagues and pestilence. Not only man-made created, but influence and lies and deceptions and fears. And one of the greatest warfares that we're in, and people don't even realize it, is called emotional warfare. Emotional warfare. Everyone say emotional warfare. Well, that's actually against your soul. Isn't your emotions in your soul? And everything that's happening, emotional warfare is more powerful than chemical warfare. In fact, there's physical warfare. You know, when a person is in an abuse relationship of some sort, whether it's physical, there's an emotional effect. And then even after a physical arena, there's still an emotional effect. You know, fear is an emotion. Amen? I can tell you that I, I've seen squirrels jump in front of my car and make 25 different decisions and still get run over. They just don't know which way to go. Man, you think they had a pound of coffee or something, you know, before. What's the her squirrel's name? Hammy or? Did anybody ever see that? Over the hedge? Hammy. <laughs> I love that guy. Anyways. Go to Second Corinthians chapter 10. It's amazing how emotions really mess us up if we allow it. Amen? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Although the squirrels that eat at my house, they don't move that quick. They eat too many nuts. 
I think I have squirrels all over my front lawn. I feed them every day. I see them walking down the other streets with nuts in their mouth. I make sure I don't. I may I try and, Lord, protect the squirrels that have nuts in their mouth. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it together. For though we walk in the physical realm, which they call flesh, but that's, we do not war according to the physical. Amen? For the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now we know that a stronghold is a memory lie. And every memory has an emotion attached to it. And it says here, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when you what? Your obedience is what? Fulfilled. In other words, it confirms that our weapons are against this unseen warfare, not from the physical or the flesh or carnal, which is human thinking, but only with the mind of Christ in spirit-filled believers can they overcome them. Only. Removing all existing memory, thoughts, and personal fiery darts. Only when your obedience is recognizing. Say, my obedience is recognizing. If you don't recognize it, you're disobedient. Does everybody get that? And so in this, there's a choice... When we, when we recognize these things in obedience of recognizing and the choice of a free will to turn from those areas, repent from those areas, and remove those areas. You know, behind every, everything, there is emotion. You and I were created out of love, which is emotion. Amen? But peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit is God's love. The problem is, is that we have fallen into a, a great emotion, and in the emotional is lust, living under satanic torment. Many individuals live under that. They're still living from their past under emotional distress. People run into doctors and get medicated or self-medicated. How many times when people saw that something happened in their lives, they decided to go back to drugs? People have been offended, rejected. All of these things that the enemy knows exactly how to manipulate and to set up humans to become emotionally disturbed, bound, rejected, and fearful. This emotional warfare must be understood in every area. It is a warfare. It is the greatest warfare going on this planet. Emotional warfare. Is everybody okay? First Timothy chapter one. The enemy plays this very well. In verse eighteen. First Timothy one eighteen. In verse, let's speak it. This I charge, I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the what? Good warfare, having faith and a good conscience, which some, having rejected concerning the faith, have suffered what? Shipwreck. And whom are Hermanius and Alexander, whom I have delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Now, wage uh, the good warfare in the faith and good conscience. This means relationship with the Lord and open to his corrective voice. We must always be willing to be open to his corrective voice. The Bible tells us that God chastens those he what? Loves. And so many times people take correction out of context. In other words, well, they, they take it in an area because they've been offended so many times, rejected so many times, that when correction comes, it's only for protection. Amen? See, or you'll become shipwrecked. 
It's a sense of abandonment from the comforter. When we become shipwrecked, it's a sense of abandonment from the comforter. And who's the comforter? The Holy Spirit. Amen. 2 Timothy 2. And it isn't that the Holy Spirit abandons us. It's that we abandon Him. Because we become so emotionally messed up that we can't hear anything and we reject anything. Our emotions have now taken over everything. Have you ever realized when you get really angry that people get out of control? What about, you know how many murders are done through jealousy and rage? Think about how people react it's all reacting to the flesh through the emotional influence in the soul. In verse 18, I mean in verse 1, I'm sorry. 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace which is God's plan that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. You, therefore, what? Must endure hardship. That means emotional tax. Isn't hardship associated with emotion? Yes. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare, and this warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Wow. So he says, be strong in his plan. Again, God's plan is always a way of escape. Choosing the right things from your free will. Everyone say, I have a free will. And this cooperates with his desires for you. And these are rules of guidelines of his purpose for each and every one of us. Everyone has boundaries that God has set for us. Your boundaries may be different than mine. Now, yes, we know there's general boundaries of sin, transgressions, and iniquities. But there are certain things where people are more weak or someone's more stronger in something. And God will set a boundary that's tighter if you're weaker. Amen? Until you can have dominion over that, then the boundaries begin to be spread further out. Again, we're going to be cooperating with his desires for us. This warfare of victory will take endurance against a hardship by entangling yourself, or not entangling yourself, in the unnecessary lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. Lust, living, on, living under satanic torment. Think about this. Those are the three categories of emotional attack. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That is the greatest warfare that is going on right now. Emotion. Emotion. How a person feels. How many times you've walked up to somebody, hey, how you doing? Why well, I've been feeling really, I didn't ask you how you feel. I said, how you doing? They want to share their feelings all the time. I always tell people, I want to know about your feelings. Tell God your feelings. I don't need to know them. Well, this is how I feel. And there are three eyes and you're out. I feel, I, I, yay, yay. The words the focus on your emotions. When we begin to focus on our emotions, the enemy's got access. You are saying, it's okay, come on in and torment me. Just say no, right? Remember those bumper stickers that said, just say no? Try and tell an addict, just say no. They're going to steal your car. That's how I was. <laughs> just say no, I'll take care of that. Praise God. I couldn't say no to anything then. <laughs> Kept saying no to God. Then he had to slap me off my Harley. Just like he did, Saul became Paul. James chapter 1. How about when you feel sick? Is that an emotion? 
Amen. Sickness releases a what? An emotion. Man, you feel like crap. Man, I feel like terrible. What do you do? Many people tell everybody how they feel. What you doing? Oh, man, I'm, I feel like whatever. And then they pounder. They, 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 they begin to build on it. And then they feel worse the next day. Hallelujah. Verse 12. James 1, 12. Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who what? Endures, overcomes temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of, of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, reality check. How is an enemy going to tempt you? Three categories. Lust, lust, and lust of self, which is pride. So you got lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and lust of, lust of yourself. He always will bring you to you. The moment you lose focus of truth, relationship with the Lord, you're not denying yourself. Remember, we're trying to, God is trying to bring us to a place where we reach a level of able to deny ourselves in every decision and choice and allow God to make the final decision. Because if we don't, we always get in trouble. Then people fall into assumption. I hate assumption. Well, I assumed that. Well, you were wrong. It's called presumptuous sin. You don't do anything unless you know. And when you don't know, you wait. It's that simple. God will never interrupt himself. And when you wait, you won't miss. Because the enemy pushes, the spirit does what? Leads. Hallelujah. Now listen, blesses the man who endures temptation or attack. For when he's been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say that when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God did, cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire. Is a desire an emotion? Yeah, it's what a want, isn't it? Amen. And then enticed, in other words, then it's watered, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows. And then when desire has conceived, when it says, when there's a full agreement with it, it gives birth to the presence of evil, which is called sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. It's that simple, isn't it? Blessed is the person who overcomes or endures these emotional attacks. Through the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of, or lust of self. These influences promote a desire, a want to be fulfilled. This is what we call false fulfillment. Did you ever see a car you wanted? Amen. When B.C., before Christ, man, you could dream about that car. You would do anything about that car. You would follow and find out what kind of car it is, whatever it was. And then when you found it, You'd be willing to pay for it just about for anything, even though there was three tires on it. I'll just get another one. See, when people desire something that they want, it's called lust. When they have no control over it. Now they're willing to compromise every area, even in relationships. How many times has somebody married they shouldn't? Amen? I'm not asking for any hands, so please. Or they bought something, purchased something, because when they first saw it, it was awesome. Man, that car is awesome. That car, the bike's awesome. This is awesome. Wow, man, I can't. But, and then you go to get it, and, and the guy won't start. It's okay. I'll fix it. You know? And then you get a jump start, and then something's clanging in, inside. That's all right. It just needs an oil change. You make excuses and justify to fulfill that desire of lust. That's all influenced by demonic forces. Amen? Oh, happy days. <laughs> what happens then is the seed of desire in, is enticed. It is fertilized and watered. As the desire increases, a place of seared conscience begins to manifest. With no conviction, shutting out all conviction, it invites the presence of evil to take control and promote its will. It dismantles its, conver its conversion of the soul. It dismantles the authority 
of Christ because now you're choosing another authority. And it shatters the emotional effects. Now let me share something with you. Satanic ritual abuse works in the same way. When children are abducted, they're satanically ritually abused. They're told they're loved and then they're beat. The devil loves to shatter the soul. Separated. And they go through this process over and over and over. They're tortured and told they're loved. They are so confused and shattered in the soul. And when they grow up, they're only dependent on their handlers because they can't make choices. They live a life of total insecurity. And that is nothing but torment of the powers of darkness living on their satanic torment. We see it all over. You know, it's, it's rampant in Hollywood. You want to get something, you better produce something else. The more satanic rituals, the more things that they have you do, the more things that people will do, which shatter to show and bring disgust to the soul and the human nature, they'll pay a large amount of money for it. Things are being more and more exposed these days. In 3 John chapter 1. Emotional battle. Verse 2 and 3, let's speak it. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than when I hear that my children walk in what? Truth, because truth sets you free. Amen? But you've got to practice the truth to be free, not just know it. So he says you can prosper in all things of the soul and keep it in good health. Globally unhealthy souls that are shattered in this emotional battle to dismantle the authority and pure love of Christ is rampant. It is rampant. People are looking for false comfort, false fulfillments, and not the true comforter of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Revelations, chapter 12, In verse 7, Revelation 12, verse 7, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. The great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, who is also known as the devil, Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In other words, the serpent was removed from the office as Lucifer, <clears throat> and he was sent to the earth in its spiritual realm, who deceives the whole world system and souls with the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, and is still going on. Lucifer has not, or serpent, or devil, dragon, whatever you want to call him, has not been sentenced yet. He's been sentenced, but he's out on bail. Amen? But he's got a full sentence that's coming. In Genesis 3. So we see that Lucifer the serpent, dragon, devil, was dismantled from his authority. Amen? 
And then we know that he took a 30 day angels with him, started his own gang, create, trying to create his own race. In Genesis 3, verse 1, let's speak it. Now the serpent was what? More cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now you may ask yourself, what was the serpent doing in the garden? He was a servant to Adam. Adam was given charge of every creeping thing. And the water, the land, Everything. In fact, the Lord said, okay, Adam, you name all the animals. Adam was given charge even over the fallen angels. They had to serve him. The serpent was in the garden because he was a servant of Adam. Does everybody understand that? Sometimes people have a hard time with that. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The woman, of course, said to her serpent, we may eat of the tree of the fruits of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, known as the tree of the good, of, uh, good and evil, or knowledge of good and evil, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die. So she knew the truth, didn't she? Then a serpent said to her, the woman, you shall not surely die, who called God a liar. For God knows that in the day you eat it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, you can think about that seed. So what was he planting? He was planting the rejection seed. God's holding something back from you. That's the lie, isn't it? A little lie of rejection. So when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband and with her, and he ate. And there's more that went on in that, but I'm not getting into it tonight. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together. And made themselves coverings, and they heard the voice of the Lord because they couldn't see him anymore because they came blinded. And as God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Why did they hide? Because they were what? Afraid. Is that an emotion? Amen. And the Lord God called out to Adam like he didn't know where he was, and he says, where are you at, Adam? And he said, I'm, I heard your voice because I couldn't see you. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said to him, who told you that? Where did you get this information? Where did you get this other voice? You were in charge of everything here. Now, why are you hiding yourself? Who has dismantled you? What have you done? Have you eaten or partaken of the tree of which I commend you not to eat or partake or touch. And obviously he did. The serpent again is in the garden as a servant of, to Adam and Eve until the place of seed of desire, not from God, was watered. And it was challenged. It was given reason and compromise. False rejection. Held back. Oh, God's just holding us back. Amen. And then the serpent gave a false promise that things would be better if they partook. These all attacks of emotional desire and emotional warfare were birthed and its fruits of self was birthed with all three lusts of the eye, lust of the flesh and pride of life, deception and fear residing in these new fallen state of beings in the human nature. In our human nature, our called our flesh, that's what resides. That character is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And if you are not led by the Spirit, it will not be crucified. You will battle emotion constantly. You allow it to mislead you, harm you, and harm others. Amen? You got to remember, now everything's residing in the flesh. It's the fallen nature. Causing separation from the spirit, soul, and body, and it needing the time of reconciliation and healing through the process of regeneration of the soul and the Holy Spirit. 
in this, you got to understand. Now, let's go a little further and see what happens here. In verse 11, and the Lord said, who told you then? He said, have you eaten this? He said, yeah, we did, man. And then the man, then he said to the man, the woman whom you have, the, this, is what the, this is Adam. The woman that you gave me, she gave to me of the tree, and I ate. So here comes blame. Blame. Not, re, not willing to take responsibility. Yeah, man, I blew it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you've done? The woman said, well, the serpent deceived me. Again, it was just a constant blame. And then, of course, the Lord brought judgment on the serpent and on the woman and on Adam. And judgment came to all of them. But you got to understand something, that all of this was because of a desire of want of a false fulfillment or a lie from the enemy. And this is the greatest battle that humanity is going through right now. And those who are not filled with the Spirit and connected to the throne room of God with true relationship with the Lord or hearing God's voice or being led by the Spirit are being misled. And they're living a life of torment because they live a life of emotion. How many times have you had good friends or whatever? You can never depend on them. Yeah, I'll see you in about two hours. I'll, yeah, I'll be there for sure. And they don't show up. Because something always comes up in their life that there's an emotion misleading. Well, you know, I really felt like, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? First John chapter 2. Now, if you are out working and you hit your finger with the hammer, you have a full right to scream out. <laughs> First John chapter 2. Remember, even Jesus said when he was sharing with them, man, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. They were like, what? And he said, does this offend you? And some of them left because they couldn't comprehend it. They were offended. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, let's speak it. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the lust of self called pride. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. Little children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. That's why it's so vitally important to keep that anointing to a level of overcome. That's why it's important that we praise and worship, that we fellowship, that we feed our spirit and starve the flesh. Amen? Again, these are the three categories of emotional strategies of the enemy, the evil forces and rulers of the world system. To deceive and control the soul of mankind with fear and lust. It is constant. 2 Corinthians 12. You know, think about music. How many times have you gone in the store and you're going to go shopping for something and you hear music going? What does it bring you to? Your past. It brings you to an emotion. What a, the, I mean, you know, you got to remember Lucifer was a praise and worship leader. He definitely knows how to deal with people's emotion. Emotional warfare. I don't think we hear enough of that. 
we hear enough of it here, but you might not hear enough of it. Verse 20. Second Corinthians twelve twenty. Let's speak it. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbitings whisperings, conceits, tumults, lest when I, I come again, my God will humble me among you, and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. You know, lust is an overwhelming desire. There, are ungod there is ungodly emotions, especially with offenses, the number one the enemy uses for shattering of the soul. And again, he seeks to shatter. The Bible says that a, a, a house divided cannot what? Stand. So he knows that if he can get you in emotional distress, he can easily mislead you. He can cause you to react instead of respond. And when you react to the flesh, you sold to the flesh and you re what? Corruption. Amen. See, if he can give a, get a person in a state of always occasionally sown in the flesh enough, that person is always trying to outrun the reaping. They can never advance because they're spending too much time sowing in the spirit trying to outrun the reaping of the flesh. Does everybody get that? Anybody get that? Okay, cool. He's good. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians four. Verse seventeen. Oh, verse 7, sorry. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody there? All right. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death of Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal bodies. Wow. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not what? We don't lose heart. We don't give up. We don't make emotional decisions. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which doesn't always seem very light, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, which doesn't seem like it's just for a moment either, is working for us. Say, it's working for me. <laughs> See, so when you're in a valley, it's working for you. So we're going to get you out of there. That's when it's working for It's working for us as far as... Uh, more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are what? seen, but the things which are, un, are not seen. Is there motion unseen? Until it reacts, then everybody sees it. Amen? For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Again, the enemy attempts to alter your focus to the emotional of self, which has no power and keeps individual in a bondage to seek false fulfillment and places them out of God's time and plan. In Galatians chapter 5.
We never want anything to be more fulfilling than God's presence. Galatians 5, verse 16. Emotional warfare. That's what we're in. In verse 16, let's speak it. I say, then walk in a spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's the lust of the flesh? Emotion. Amen? For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. Amen? And it goes on. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of what? Sin and death. And it tells you all the reactions of the lust. Look at it. Now the works of the flesh are what? Evident, which are what? Adultery. Hello? I'd say that's lust, don't you think? Fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions. Dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you before, and just I also told you in time past, that those who practice, live according to these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's not even not only associated with entering the kingdom of God, but it's inheriting the things of the kingdom of God. Because God can't trust someone who lives by emotion in that arena. If they're always making decisions by emotion, and they... Judged by emotion, they can never be trusted. Amen? Only those who cooperate with the leading of the Holy Spirit, there's victory over the emotional battle of the soul. It's constant. Psalm 23. That's why we want to reach a level of the ability to deny ourselves in every choice, decision, and emotion, desire. <clears throat> so when you do blow it, don't justify it. Amen? Repent. Hallelujah. Why? Let me ask you this. If it's ungodly, is it unclean? Doesn't the word say don't touch things unclean? Amen. Verse 1, what does it say? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not as want a desire. Hello. Now, if he's truly your shepherd, you don't, you're, not in, you're not in want. You know that everything's going to work to the good and he's going to provide whatever is needed. And if you wait, it comes, unless he sends you. Amen? You may sit there and wait for a bottle of milk for three years. He'll send you to go get one. <laughs> he may send someone to come by to give you the money to go get it too. But you never know. Somebody could go by and say, man, the Lord woke me up this morning and said, man, you need milk. And you're going to tell man, I need meat. And I'm going to close this Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verse 8. And let's start with verse 1. I like this one. Verse 1. I love this. Is everybody there? Oh, boy. Speak it with me, please. I will bless the Lord when I feel like it. All times. Did you ever notice that when people get miserable, they don't want to praise God? I've seen it happen all the time. I've seen people come into service, their hands are, and say, God didn't answer my prayer. Oh, he didn't do this for me, or he didn't do that for me. Oh, there's that emotional warfare. Why should I praise God? He didn't do it. Then the enemy starts speaking and reasoning and justifying. Maybe through the, some of the service, one hand might go up, you know. Yeah, maybe he's right. <laughs> and by the end of the service, says, gosh, you're right, I repent. <laughs> and 
And now if that doesn't happen, that person is in trouble. Big time. They usually end up running. They're trying to run from themselves, but it's actually God's presence they're running from. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Man, if that happened, we wouldn't hear so much garbage coming out of people's mouths. My soul shall make its boast where? In the Lord. That's a converted soul. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name all together. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. You know, you might as well just put the word emotions because fear is an emotion. Amen. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear the Lord and reverence, honor, and respect, and does what? Delivers them. All taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. All fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear, reverence, honor, and respect him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. You won't lack. You won't Desire to think. See, you know, that's one of the things that we should be exchanging every day. Lord, I exchange my desires for your desires. Amen? I exchange my frustrations for your peace. My heaviness for your joy. I forgive and bless everyone who's persecuted me, used me, spoke against me, offended me, rejected me, and didn't live up to my expectations. And sever all emotional tensions. With every person, place, and thing, music, event. You know, we pick up these things every single day. Something may happen. You don't even realize it. You went into the store and you ran into somebody that you haven't seen in years. And there was an emotional effect, emotional attachment. Now the enemy's going to use it for warfare against you. Do you remember if you should have done this, if you went, didn't do this? If He's always bringing you to the past because he can't get you in the future. He has none. All your attacks are emotional warfare from your past or anything that you bring on yourself. Amen? Listen, it's happening. It's, it's strong. It's, it's never been so stronger in this world. We must recognize these things and not allow it to penetrate our soul or plant corruptible seed. It doesn't mean we're motionless. We have peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That's the love of God. Amen? Thank you, Father. We're honored and blessed for your word. Thank you for understanding that there is an emotional warfare going on, and the enemy's in charge of that. But we know you're greater, because he who's in us is greater than he is in the world. And love, perfect love, casts out all fear. So, Lord, fill us with your perfect love. Visit us in dreams and visions and revelations that we may Maintain the restraints of the flesh against the soul of lust in Jesus' name.